Good morning, guys, and welcome to the Jersey TV. I'm Ryan Nugent. I'm privileged this morning to be joined by Stuart McCall, Rangers legend, Hall of Fame inductee, uh, six Scottish Championships, three Scottish, uh, sorry, six Premierships, three Scottish Cups, and two League Cups. Good morning, Stuart. Good Thanks morning. How are you doing today, mate? Yeah, good, Paul. Thank brilliant, you. Brilliant, great. Uh, so, here this morning, a brief 20 minute interview to um, debrief from Oswald's last night. So, I hope you had a good night there. Yeah. Um, answering Q&A for the fans and what have you. Um, and just to do a quite brief over your career, so um, started at Bradford in the youth ranks there? Yeah, that's right. I was a 16-year-old boy when I got taken on as an apprentice for two years. Um, a lot of my pals had gone to Leeds United and Arsenal and Forest and that, and I thought it was missing the ball. But anyway, Bradford took me on, which was uh, brilliant. They were in the in them days, it was the fourth division. They used to have one, two, three, four divi- divisions, not um, you know Premier Championship one and two. So it was in the low division, but it was, it was great to get a start in, in, in the game. And then you get two years to to make your mark and hopefully get a, get to become a professional. Um, tough times um, as an apprentice, only two of us. But I, I think that's what made me, to be honest. You know, and the, doing the you know divoting the pitch, cleaning the bus, doing 32 pair of boots a day. Um, Getting in at like eight o'clock, leaving at six, two buses and all that nonsense. Um, but it was hard work, but it, it was enjoyable. And as I said, I think that was a bit of character building, really. And yeah. it, what stood me in good stead for, thankfully, being a decent career. Yeah, I understand you were made captain at age 21. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's right. Yeah, obviously, um, there was a, you know, we had a good success. Um, got promoted, didn't well, won the, won the won the league in 85, the third division, but unfortunately, obviously, there was a fire disaster um, we went through, which was horrendous, naturally. But yeah, and the season afterwards, made captain at 21 and uh, went on to play um, many games for them. How do you find the older pros received the news that a 21-year-old was being made captain? Was it well received? I think, I think, to be honest, I was probably one of the oldest ones there. We had a really young, we had a couple of senior ones, but we had a really young squad. Yeah. The club didn't have a lot of money. It was about bringing boys through from the, the junior ranks, um, picking up players that had been released from, you know, uh, clubs in the Premiership. Uh, um, you know that's what happened. So it was a really good team spirit. I think, I think if you're going to be successful in football, that's what you need. Yeah. And uh, I think you, your club's only as good as your, your senior pros. And we had two or three really good senior pros, but now they were they were fine. Brilliant. And an opportunity to play in Division One as it was known by the moving to Everton. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, I was at Bradford for eight years, uh, and we just missed out and get into the to. We'll say the old division won the Premiership in the, in the playoffs. First time the playoffs were brought brought in, and we got beat um, by Middlesbrough. We beat them home two one. We got beat at their place two 0 and obviously Bradford then stayed down. Everton came in for me, and you know it, it, it was unfortunately for uh, for the club because I'd, I'd, I'd put everything in. It was time to move on, yeah. and I had you know three brilliant years at Everton, a, yeah. a massive club, and you know really enjoyed my time there. You see the highlight was playing the FA Cup final in the first year when you were there. Yeah, I mean, obviously that that stands out. But you know, the the first season, I was 24 year old. I wasn't a young kid, but I went from being a big fish, if you like, in a small pond at Bradford to you know this you know a small fish in a big pond, if you like, and, and playing with such every every player was an international. I learned so much from the likes of Peter Reid and you know the guys like that. But um, yeah, I think you know, at the end of that season. Mm. Managed to come on and score a couple of goals at Wembley, but yeah. we got in, inevitably we, we got beat in the end. So and I don't know oh, too much of it. As well. Wasn't that left footed volley yeah, the box? Well, right footed, but I mean, I want to I want to reach if it were left foot. But yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a bit of it. And then my second, third season were better seasons for me because I felt part of it. Then you know, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, great times at Everton, a really good club. Yeah, just towards the end of your time at Everton as well, your first call up for the. Scotland side as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I heard Maradona never showed up. So he had you were playing. <laughs> well, that's my story. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, Scotland had qualified. <clears throat> I played a couple of couple of games for the under twenty ones and overage player under Craig Brown and Tommy Craig. Yeah. And uh, out of the blue, really, Scotland had qualified for Italian ninety, and then out of the blue, I got a call up. And it was Argentina at home, at Hamden, and you know, it's a dream. And then you think, well, you know, you get called up, you just want to get on the park. But lo and behold, I was in the starting 11, which was, was incredible. There was four, four deputies, me, Craig Levine that night, 
Uh, Stuart McKinney who scored a goal, I nodded it down to me, scored. And Robert Fleck, there were four of us that made his debuts that night. But yeah, it had been the only thing that, you know, Maradona never turned up. And yeah, yeah. from my Argentinian sources, he heard that was making me debut, so he went. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, I think he got, got an injury in that. But do you remember much of Claudio Canigia that night? Obviously, he went on to play for Rangers. That's right, he did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's still in here, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. Um, yeah, Canigia played. Uh, but, Boy, I think Batista in Midlock Park. I mean, he looked about 16. He was, you know, he beard and everything. He was only, he was only a young kid apparently. But um, yeah, you know, great memories to to, to come out of Hamden, full house, to beat him one nil, and they were the reigning champions. Um, the thing is, well, then the Scotland supporters thought, well, if we can beat them, we're going to go win the World Cup. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's Scotland we're lucky to have you. Understand you were. Possibly about 60 seconds we've become oh, an England international. Gosh, yeah, long story, yeah. But uh, as an under-21, I was got, I got picked for England and Scotland when I was at Bradford. Bradford were in the third division them days, so never expected to come. The call I was in the bath. Secretary's come down and says, he said to me, this is great news, Stuart, you've been called for Scotland 21s. I was absolutely delighted. Um, Sir Alex Ferguson was 21 manager. Jock Steen was the, the, the national manager. And then two minutes later, come down and says, better news, you've been called up for England 21s as well. I went, it was it wasn't better news. It was a bit of a nightmare. That's subjective, isn't it? Yeah, yep, yep. you know, and he had there was no phones in them days. I couldn't ring my mum and dad. Um, it, it was better for Bradford at the time if I picked England because yep. my transfer value would be better if I was in England under twenty one rather than Scottish under twenty one. Trevor Cherry, late Trevor Cherry, great guy. Um, was it was Bradford City's manager? He played for England. They were saying, "Oh, you, you should play for England," and that. So I picked England. Went away with Turkey. Yep. Tried to get me on my five minutes ago, I sort of rebuffed everything, snapped my tie ups, you know, warmed up behind the goal so that I couldn't get on. And then just at the final whistle, I thought the referee blew the whistle for me to come on. And thankfully, it was a full time whistle. So yeah. I went back, changed my mind, and uh, thankfully, um, Scotland gave me another chance, and I went on to yeah. win 40 caps. Major, major sliding doors moment in your uh, career. Cause absolutely massive. Obviously, the call came from Ibrox with the, yeah. the surge and recruitment of Scottish players and yeah. stuff. And you know, it was it, it was incredible. Um, you know, that one moment, that one second. 30 seconds later, I'd have been on the pitch. I'd have been English. Yeah. You know, in, in in you know in football terms. And as I said, Rangers at that time it was a three foreign rule, but I was seen as Scottish, so yep. who knows if I'd have ever made it to Ibrook. So yep. it was a massive sliding doors moment, yeah. So the call came that summer, 91. Yep. Call you've been waiting for your whole life. Well, <laughs> it, yeah, it was incredible, really, because the month um, before the, the end of the previous season, I got a call. Um, some somebody working at Rangers asked me. You know, would I be interested in signing for him? Now I was really happy, Everton. I've got to say, I had three great years. Um, but you know, I'd, I'd been at Rangers as a kid. Um, I never thought for one day it, it, the opportunity to come and play for him. But when I get a call, and it, it, as I said, it was from a journalist, and says, um, you know, Graham Souness would like you to to come to Rangers. Now to go to Rangers was absolutely huge. But then to go and work under. You know, some the midfield player of of yeah. of Graham's stature, yeah. I could only get better. And you know, I was, you know, I, you know, I said, well, listen, we'll, we'll see what happens in the summer, at Evan, yeah. um, and and then we'll take it from there. But would I be interested? Of course, I would be interested. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> a week a week later, lo and behold, Graham left Rangers and went to <laughs> went to Liverpool. Yeah. So yeah. I thought the deal had gone. Uh, you know, my chance to move to Rangers had gone. <clears throat> but in the summer. Again, I got another phone call from my agent saying the deal was still on. The great late Sir Walter Smith um, wanted to sign me, and uh, I was up there. Everton, when Howard Kendall was happy to let me go, they wanted to, f um, to change um, change the midfield. They wanted a few quid in. You know, I was one of the few people that I could get some money for. Um, and yeah, the rest is history. And your debut featured a, a rear hour from the goalie as well that day. Gosh, yeah. I yeah. mean. Hearts away, my first game, I think it was the second game of the season, yeah. um, second league game, and we went to Tyne Castle, played actually, I thought, okay, but, you know, as the gaffer said to us, it's all about winning, you know what I mean, and uh, he re reiterated his, his thoughts at half-time, but yeah, it was a goal, I mean, the goal had a difficult... Must be quite windy that day or something. Well, <laughs> he, had a, he had a difficult start, yeah. um, did Andy, um, following on from Chris Woods, and people after a month were questioning we ended up being a 
probably well was the greatest goalie Rangers ever had. Um, yeah, he, he let a goal, he let the ball go wide. He thought it was going wide, and Scott Crabb put it in the bottom corner. And we got beat one nil, but uh, thankfully um, that was the lowest point, and we went on to to have a great, um, successful, you know, seven years together. Yeah, and we had a bad one of Scottish Cups that year as well, I believe. Well, when the Scottish Cup, yeah, first, in first, first time in eleven year. Um, Played Airdrie, it was a, probably the worst Scottish Cup final ever in history, but it, it, it gave us a double. Yeah. And um, it was Gaffer's first season, um, and, and Archie, it was, they were a great combination. And uh, as I say, yeah, we, we managed to beat Airdrie 2 1, um, and it, it, it just set us up for you know what was going to be the season after an incredible season. Hard to believe it, 30 years ago now, that season 92 93 is arguably. <laughs> One of the greatest, you know, seasons that the club had. Unfortunately, obviously, a whisker away from a, a Champions League final, but we probably actually didn't realise at the time yeah. what we were playing. In. No, um, when you look back at the achievement now of it, but obviously going a massive forty-four games undefeated was yeah. incredible. Um, when the domestic treble and going mm. undefeated in Europe, and um, obviously just that probably just one goal away in the very end in the velodrome. Um, well, exactly. I mean, no, you know, nobody could have. Foresee, foresee what was going to what was going to happen that season, but um, you know, to I think we, we got beat up at Dundee four three. We Billy Dodds got two for Dundee. Yep. I remember the gaffer coming in and having them ripped right into us. Yep. Um, says we, we need to up his game, and, and thankfully we did. As you say, we went forty four games undefeated, um, ten in Europe, which was you know incredible. Yep. Beating Leeds home and away in the Champions League battle of Britain, uh, and then going on. And yeah, I mean, the, the actual the, the tie in, in Marseille was a winner takes all, even though it was a fifth game in, out of six. Yep. Whoever won that was 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 getting into the final. That was, uh, must have been incredible in those kind of nights. <coughs> Marseille at home. I mean, I was, oh, I was too young. I was ten years old at that yeah. point. I was too young. To, I mean, to go to the game. Mar- that was actually my first, my first game that season. Gosh, so well, well, Marseille at home. You know, we were two 0 down with with ten minutes to go. And the gaffer brought, uh, I say, Swiggy, got him at Swiggy on, and um, it was absolutely bouncing it down. Park was mud, and yeah. you know he scores, and Big Haley, you know, did what Mark did every game and, and scores, and, and we we come back from two 0 to get two each. Um, had some really good, good, good games in that, you know, yeah. against Bruges and um, and the, and the likes. But you know the the games, but Big Mark Haley got sent off against. Uh, I think it was Bruce on it earlier on yeah, in there uh, at home when we beat him. Big Nizzy's goal. Um, Do you remember much about that Nizzy's goal? Oh, it's, it's incredible! I- iconic. For I'm, well, I'm taking assist from that because he went to cross <laughs> it, hit me on my big backside, but yeah. fell back down to him and he crossed it in. And Do you know the boy that he, the, the boy the ball deflected off with Vander Hayden? He's actually Clamont's number two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Strange one. I didn't actually realise that until he was appointed. That, that's right. Through. That's the boy that is. But brilliant. Over, but, ah, yeah, he did well for us. Hopefully, he'll go on and have as much success Hopefully. as he did for us that time. But yeah, and 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 that season was just was was just incredible, as you say, the ninety two ninety three season. Um, but yeah, I mean, people say you, you know, obviously, what happened afterwards. Marseille got got the title taken off him because of the the bribery and things that was with tap it. Yeah, but for me, I don't look back with regret. I just look back back with pride. Yeah. You know, to to do what we did and. Of the support that we had was 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 an incredible season. Yeah. So the following summer, Rangers uh, broke the British transfer record, signed Duncan Ferguson from Dundee United for four million. Yeah, just a young man at the time. What, what can you remember, big big dunk? Big, well, we had a, a say history that we we, we tried to Rangers at the time try to nitpick. You know, we'd gone from obviously when when Graham was manager to bringing up the best of English. You know, in, in Terry Butcher and and Chris Woods and the likes, Graham Roberts, and then I think you know. Under under the gaffer, we went for the best sort of homegrown, if you like, and we we got Alan McLaren in from Hearts and big big David McPherson came back and uh, Alec Cleland and Gary Bowen from Dundee United. We sort of nitpicked, you know, the best of the Scottish talent, and Big Dunk came in and um, yeah, listen, he, he 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 was a young boy and he he was trying to make his way. We already had an established part, partnership in uh, Hayley McCoist, um, so he, he couldn't really. You know, get himself in the squad and or get himself in the starting eleven. Uh, but yeah, Gordon Judy was signed that season as well, wasn't he? Well, jukebox. Yeah. I mean, he went on to be my room partner yeah. and uh, a good friend of mine. And Juke had always wanted to 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 come to Rangers as well. So that's right. Yeah, we 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 got some we got some good players in that season. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. 
the following season after that, an iconic sign. Mr Loudrop arrived as well as yeah, the year. Yeah, Brian didn't know a lot about him. Obviously I knew about his brother as much as, as much as Brian. Um and I remember in his first one of his first games I was injured up in the club deck and we played Celtic. And I remember I don't know if the left back was it was Tosh McKinley or Tom Boyd, I can't remember. But Brian had a sort of a 70-30 ball in his favour yep. and he sort of put the brakes on a little bit and uh, the Celtic fullback, I, as I, I can't remember which one it was, came right through him and I went, oof, Brian, right, OK, I didn't know Brian more. So at half-time, as, as, as the players are coming off, I've gone down um, to the dressing room and as Brian's come off, I've just pulled him aside and I said to him, listen, you know what I mean, regardless of... You know, when it's an old firm game, you cannot pull out of 50 50s. Yeah. And he looked at me and I said, I know it might not be your game. Yeah. Little did I know it was going on to be the the iconic and unbelievable, brilliant star it was. Yeah. But um, I'm taking the credit for that because I says, Whatever happens, Brian, you do, do not pull out of 50 50s. And uh, but no, he, he was a not only a fantastic player, a brilliant guy to have in the dressing room, great character, yeah. and uh, as you said, an icon. It, the thing was, it was quite demoralising because the likes of Goffey and Bomber, we couldn't get near him in training, you know, and it, it was it was just, you know, slinky hips and it just died past him. But it was, it, it was, it, it was brilliant to play with you. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Um, so obviously we're in, I think it was seven in a row at that point, six in a row maybe. Yeah, so... Yeah. yeah. Was there talk of the nine at that point? Was no, just no. Season by season. Listen, honestly, season I, I can't. I can't remember that. Um, I think obviously we would have had it in his mind, but we never talked about it. Yeah. Talks cheap, and you know, I mean, you've got to go out and do it. So I think when it got nearer and nearer, it, it wasn't us talking about it. it was the punters, the media, etc. But yeah, yeah. you know, at that stage, it was, you know, let's just try to try to win the next one. Right, keep it going. Keep it going. And then Rangers obviously went over to Italy and brought back a Mr Gascoigne after that. Yeah, and it, it's like that. You, you want your club to improve and you want them to bring the best players in, but you don't want to bring the best players in in your position. You know what I mean? It was all right, Brian coming in and that and, and lights, but yeah, when yeah. you see Gazza signing, I'm going, oh no, he's, he's in my position. Must have been a as well. Oh, gosh, well, yeah. <laughs> and you think, well, obviously Gazza's going to start, so you've got to just fight to play, play alongside him. But um, yeah. yeah, again, you know, people, um, I love opinions on Gaza off and on the pitch. On yeah. the pitch, obviously, he was a genius, but off the pitch, he was, he, he was probably, well, he was the most generous sort of human being and person I've ever met. Um, a great teammate. Um, you know, he obviously had all the ability. And I, I remember when he came in, I said, listen, Gaza, if I'm in the team next year, you know, you do your, your bit higher up the park, I'll win the ball, I'll give it to you, because I can't do things you could do. But he wanted, uh, like in, in the, like a number 10 or a, a fancy Dan, he wanted to get in. He couldn't tackle, um, but he, <laughs> he tried his best. Probably, yeah, yeah, oh no. <laughs> he, was, he, was a, he was a proper midfielder. He, he worked hard, he got up and down. Yeah. He was a box to box midfielder, not just a, as I say, a fancy Dan, give me the ball and I'll do the, the tricks. He was, um, like I say, on the park, he was, he was a, Delight to play with, but off the park, he was he was a fantastic guy. The day we won eight in a row at Highbrooks against Aberdeen, that hat trick he scored. I, I don't think I've ever seen a, an individual performance as great as that in a Rangers jersey in my life. He just basically literally took the game by a, a true match winner. Well, you know, that was incredible. It, that day. it was, you know, and, and that's one of the, the great games I, I always remember because we went 1 0 down. I think Big Roy Aitken, of all people, yep. scored for Aberdeen, and you could sense a little bit of. And then Gaza, as he said, just went, you know what? It's it's my ball, it's my game. I'm going to take it, and he and he, and he got an unbelievable heart trick, and um, it was not that I can remember it, but it was some night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. So on to the, the year that we, we made it nine, unfortunately a bad season for yourself with with a bad injury that you yeah. picked up. Um, not alone in that, I think the club has suffered injuries across oh. the board. Uh, the goalie obviously got injured as yeah. well badly. Uh, Mark Hately was recalls mm. from his loan spell like Queen's but obviously yeah. it was a, a permanent signing but um and I think he was asked to come back up the road as well. Yeah, that's that's right. And uh yeah, listen, it was obviously it's iconic season. I'd, I'd I look back at my Rangers career, I was seven seven year there. Uh, I can only remember probably two of them right enough because you know the, the the times we had were incredible. But yeah. I think ninety two, ninety three season stands alone because it was um, to win the treble and obviously to win it um the final game of the season at our rivals home because Hamden was yep. was um getting refurbished um to be Aberdeen in the League Cup and the Scottish Cup was, was incredible. And then 
as you said, the, the 96 season for me to beat Hearts 5-1 culminated in a you know, brilliant season. I mean, I think Celtic went that season um, under Tommy Burns, only lost one game. You know, we yep. lost three, yep. Um, yep. but, you know, they, they drew a lot. So, um, to be... A, mid, a midweek game where uh, Gorham said of a no don't penalty. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 incredible. There were, there were a lot of moments because yep. they had the top, top side at that time. Yep. Um, so that was huge for me. Um, but then, obviously, Nanny and Rowe, you know, I played... Um, seven, the first seven league games and we'd won them all as I kept telling the gaffer because I think you had to play maybe 10 to get a medal but he got me a medal because I played, I played seven U European games and seven four, and then I, I got my knee injury at Ajax uh, and was out for 11 months but um, yeah it was what we'd worked for as you say we didn't talk about it but when you get to six and seven and eight and I think then we had such a bond as a, as a unit we kept bringing the odd individual in like you're saying yep, yep. Um, but to get that with a group of players that we had and we've been together for so long I think that's what football's about it's um, a great management team with the gaffer and Archie and Dodgy um, and then you know the, the group of players back with the support we had was was just incredible Always like brothers, basically, you know, the way, yeah, you know, that, that's absolute, exactly what it was. Trust, you know, telepathy almost in the park as well, which is it, it, I mean, and when you've got lights of Coist and Haley up front, you always we always knew if we got went a goal behind, which we did a lot. Um, we had we had this the, and, and Duke it up, up top, and then obviously Brian came in. We had the, the firepower to always score goals, and um, that's what we did. See, when you did go one nil down, you Regularly, I brought were seen at more. We went through a stage where we were giving teams 1 0 leads. I think we're now going through a bit of a phase where we're giving teams 2 0 leads before well, we're starting to play. But yeah. did you feel the fans got on top of you as much as they do nowadays? Cause no, I, I think the fans were exactly the same as the dressing room. We knew, because um, yeah. we, we did. I don't know if we, it wasn't that psychological thing that teams came out and especially away from home, we, we, it happened at, at, um, at home uh, to Leeds United in the 92-93, you know, a Champions League game, went a goal by, behind in the first few minutes. But well, What goal was as well? Well, yeah, Gary Mark, yeah, top corner, bang. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, th I think we just had that belief that the game lasts for 90 minutes. Um, I'm not going as far as the gaffer used to say, let them get the first goal and then we'll come back. But it was almost, it felt like that in that season, 92-93 yeah. season. We went behind so often, but we also used to look up the top end of the pitch. And as I said, we needed Coyce and Big Mark up there. We were always going to we're always going to create chances, but them two always took them. I think the goal used to go with the BFG, the bit flick goal. Well, we had a few of them, yeah. yeah. You look back at things now, I was, you know, sometimes it takes 40 passes to score a goal. And as Andy, Andy, Andy used to say, kick, boot. Flick by Hartley, goal McCoy. That was uh, happened often. I've seen a video when he said oh, that was that was our tactic. You know, I'll, <laughs> I'll hit it up to Mark. Mark will flick away and Coy still finish it. And um, yeah. Ellen Road, he put it up. Me, Durant went ahead. Exactly. There's no many happening. No, obviously, that's like Hartley scored the goals. Yeah, Malilo against Lukic. Yeah. And Kenny. listen, we've talked about so many players, but I mean, we Durant there. Talk about a, a player for the big games. A number of times he used to step up. Yeah. People say to me. I never, I never saw him before his injury, but as I said, he must have been some player because when he come back after his injury, yep. all the big games, Marseille away, Celtic games, yep. Yep. Aberdeen, whatever it was, yep. you know, if you needed somebody to step up in the big game occasions, we generally did that, and he was again not only a, a terrific player but a great teammate. Definitely, definitely. Do you see when you obviously beat Leeds United there, was that a special kind of personal one for you? Obviously with your Bradford affiliations and well, stuff. Well, so. it's funny because my, my dad, um, back in the day, played for Leeds United and hence I was born in Leeds and I followed Leeds home and away as a boy um, for many years. And then to go back down there um, and to beat him on their patch was, yeah, it was something, something special. And, you know, we, we didn't have any tickets. It was a, a thing in them days. Leeds fans didn't get tickets for Ibrooks and we didn't get tickets then. But yeah. I did a deal with Gary Mark. I got his tickets for his family up here and he got tickets for mine. So uh, my brother and brother-in-law were there. My dad came down the night before to watch his train on Ellen Road. But it was too much for him to actually go to the game. Yeah. So he happily sat and watched it in the, the working men's club and uh, cheered every every time the ball hit the back of the net. So, yeah, it, it was... Uh, it, you know, probably one of the standout games of me, uh, thankfully, lucky Rangers career. I don't think they took it very well. I think they thought they were going to turn us over. Well, yeah, it, it wasn't so much them. I think it was, 
I think after the two one up here, I think a, a lot of the ex Leeds United players yeah. got asked about, you know, which the media do. Yeah. Um the likes of the late great Billy Bremner, Eddie Gray, great guy, Peter Lorimer, um, Joe Jordan, I think all all the ex Leeds players got asked, you know, what do you think Battle of Britain what's going up in it? It wasn't a case of that Leeds would win it, but it was which was the thing down there, how many leads would beat us by. Right, yeah. And that sort of stuck in the throat of a, a lot of our guys. And yeah, thankfully went down there and put in a performance. It's unknown team basically for you. Well, it I was. Know. I remember Archie, Archie uh, putting up uh, things in the dressing room, you know, what all, what the press had said. You know, Rangers had been fortunate to win 2-1 at Ironbrooks. And now, you know, Leeds, you know, the, the, the champions of England will show what Scottish football is all about. But... No, thankfully, Ross, it, it never happened. Brilliant, brilliant. So, obviously, we'll maybe not talk about the year that we narrowly missed out in 10. Um, but a home calling for you the year after to back down to Bradford and be captain again? Yeah, I mean, I, I was 34, I still had a year left at Bradford, uh, at Rangers. And, uh, you know, obviously, Dick Adver, Advocate was coming in, I spoke to Dick. Yeah. He wanted me to stay. He, th he thought I could still be a. Although I wouldn't play as many games, the likes of. You know, young Barry coming through, yeah, so Charlie Miller, yeah. Denny McInnes. He was bringing his own players in. I think Gio come in. Um, so I wasn't going to play as much. And I, ju I just felt it was, it was a time to go. Obviously, the gaffer had gone. Archie had left. Coiste, Goffey. It was like it was time to go. It was the end of an era. New manager coming in, new ideas. Um, so I, I was actually going to, uh, heading down to to sign for Barnsley, and I uh, got a call down the motorway, and it was. Uh, Bradford chairman says, listen, away, you're going to Barnes, we can't let you go, you need to come to us. I was 34 at the time Wonderful. and uh, went there and, yeah, you know, to get back, to get in a premiership yeah. um, that season, first time in 70 odd year was, was, was like just a dream come true and yeah. obviously Rangers did came in, he had a fantastic first season, so yeah. Yeah. everything was good in the garden, as I say. Right. Unexpected reunion for you with Naval Southall as well. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. Big Nev came and jo and and joined us. Yeah. Um, it like it was more coach inside. He, he ended up playing a couple of games. It was I think it was forty. Big Nev, but a character, interesting. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I mean yeah. I, when I played for Evan, <clears throat> we had some huge characters. But I never thought I'd ever um, play alongside a better goalkeeper. Nev was, but I've got to say, you know the the goalie just tips it for me because the goalie only stood I don't even think he reached six foot although he used to always be on his tippy toes he down there um, but you know he, he was he was the best probably uh, well player you know I ever pl played with the goalkeeper and pr prior to his injury you know the two years he had at Rangers he, he, he was incredible but um, yeah Big Nev was a character as well and an outstanding goalkeeper so manager obviously get Brad for the Premier League that was Fantastic! How you'd always said you wanted to be a Premier League player with Bradford. Well, yeah, I mean, I'd had eight years prior to that, and obviously gone through the the, the, the horrendous fire disaster and that, and the yeah. bond bond got 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 built, and you know I was fortunate to go back, um, and I think the first five games had only got two points, and you know if anyone said you were going to get promoted that year, they'd been carted off, but yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, dreams came true, and. We got promoted uh, at Wolverhampton, and that was the day my me, me, uh, twin brother fell off the motor, well, as people year. remember do. But uh, yeah. Yep. yeah, it was, yeah, it, you know, it was, you know, when you have dreams as a player, <clears throat> um, first dream is obviously to, to get a pro club and then to build a bond and then to go back to Bradford and the support was was fantastic. So yeah, it was a, it was a great season. So obviously after that, you went to Sheffield United. Neil Warnock's assistant manager. You, how much was things like obviously your time under the <coughs> under Archie Knox were they yeah. an influence in the style that you wanted to present yourself as a manager? Was that yeah again to emulate them? again I had had four un unbelievable years at Bramford and I was thirty eight year old and uh, I got a call call from Neil and I didn't I didn't know Neil I, I knew of him but I didn't know much about it. I went to meet him yeah um, I could have signed for two or three clubs for a lot more money. Um, but Sheffield United just felt right. Um, we had a lot of young, young boys coming through, um, like said Jaggy Elk, who went to play for England. Nick yeah, Montgomery yeah. was just, just yeah. left Hibs as yeah. uh, Hibs manager. Um, Michael Tong, and I thought, yeah, even at 38, I can do a bit. And I went, went with that first season. We went on. We, we got beat in a playoff final to get to the, the Premiership. We got to the FA Cup. 
semi-final. Stephen Gerrard, as a young kid, played for Liverpool. We got beat um, over two games. We got beat against Arsenal in the FA Cup semi-final. Um, it was probably the best season Sheffield United ever had, and you know I think a lot of people thought it was going there to wind down. And I think for two seasons I ended up playing 80 odd games for them. So I was fortunate to play to 40, and. Uh, Certainly learnt a lot off uh, off Neil. That's that's for sure. Yeah, I think you were at the, the Battle of Bramall Lane as well. Well, do you know I, I missed that. Did you? Yeah, I missed that. That happened uh, before, but I knew all about Neil. And you know, Neil wasn't a great tactician, or as I say, um, I sort of he didn't look into taxi that much. But his his thing was getting the best out of the players. His his was before and half time that when when he came to life, uh, and he had a way about him which was obviously successful and uh, yeah I had five first two years playing uh, and a coach and then the, the three years after as assistant manager and you know there, there were great times culminated as getting to um, getting promoted to the Premier League yeah great so then four years at Bradford as manager four years at Motherwell as manager yeah do you look back on those two to Bills as being successful for yourself yeah I mean obviously as, as, as uh, my first time at Bradford and um, they were in the bottom division I'd left Sheffield United in the Premier League um, as assistant to come down to the bottom league and it was a culture shock you know you, you're you working with guys I didn't know and, and the level um, but then I came up to Motherwell and you know nobody could foresee the, the, the times we are going to have there and you know 12 certainly the first three and a half years um, to finish third setting second for Motherwell playing the Champions League um, yeah and we just had a, a great group of players um, myself Kenny Black the manager uh, assistant to me um, and, and all the, the guys was there we went on to yeah 12 you know um, I think success unrivaled you know for, for Motherwell to play in Europe three years on the top was 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 brilliant but um, yeah I always look back on, on them days and you know, I was a lucky guy. Yeah, yeah. Then they caught the Ibrox again. Yeah, I mean, I'd left Motherwell, and I think I think four month, four months later, I'd, I'd done a lot of the the TV work for BT. You know, when Coyce was managing that, and you know, knew what he was going through under the the regime there with Mike Ashley and that. And then, you know, obviously Mike Ashley departed, and I got a call with you know a couple of months of the season to go, and it was a no-brainer. You know, I was sat doing anything. I just wanted to go and help, and. Um, you know, we, we we got so far. Um, it's, it's probably well, it was without doubt. Is I've been gone in. I've been in a lot of football clubs, and I went in at Rangers, and it was the lowest morale I'd ever been. Um, the atmosphere was the, the the bond between the fans and the players was non-existent. Obviously, uh, the team was struggling. Um, all the stuff that had happened with the board and Mike Ashley and everything, yeah. but it was a it was a fresh challenge. You know, new people had come in. Um, Dave King and you know, you know Mr. Gilligan, who uh, you know I met, and uh, they offered me the job, and um, yeah, it was it was a, it was a no-brainer for me. Uh, you know, I got a call from golfer John Brown, the gaffer had put my name in, um, and yeah, it was it, it was so near yet so far. You know, we we managed to turn it round. I think in my first game, I think we had twenty-eight thousand there. When we finished, it was full houses. You know, the the games. Um, but obviously it was just a step too far against Motherwell and yeah, it, you know, that's history. But I was the proudest man ever to, you know, not only to play for Rangers, but then to become manager was, yeah, was, was incredible. And just unfortunately it wasn't the fairy tale ending that I'd, I'd hoped for. But, you know, still three three brilliant months and I loved every minute of it. Did the gaffer make himself available for you for any advice when you needed it? Do you know, I've got, I've, I've got to be honest, I, I went in the first day, <clears throat> and I got a call on me f on, on the phone in the office, and uh, the secretary said, "I'm, I'm going to put you somebody. Somebody wants to speak to you. Somebody special." And I didn't know it, it was the gaffer. And he, he said, his first words, I can't swear, was, "Do you know what you're letting yourself in for?" Um, and I thought, "Tears, gaffer. Thanks for that." But it just went on, and he, you know, he's always there. I didn't want it. I never wanted to burden him, but he was always there with advice, and. Uh, yeah, but I, I remember that phone call was so special. <laughs> His first words were, do you know what you're letting yourself in for? You'll have a, a direct point of reference when he came back for obviously when Le Guin left under a cloud as well, so he'll know exactly what you're going through. Yeah, yeah, it was. And, um, you know, he, he, listen, 
as a, as as a manager, always people ask me, you know, what was your like as a manager? He was brilliant, but first and foremost, as a person, he was an incredible man, and uh, I owe him so much in my in my career. I learned so much off him, and he was just a, a great person to work for and and with. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Unfortunately, the job was never there full time for you. Just the, the you know, I don't think the, the dominoes fell in your direction. Oh, unfortunately, like, no. Sure. Listen. You know, people said, yeah, have we got regrets? Obviously, you know, the 15-minute spell we had <laughs> at home at Motherwell, yeah. um, we were lost three goals in a 15-minute spell and ultimately put us out of getting a chance to get into the, the top league. But uh, a lot back, we just, n no regrets. Um, just a, a great opp opportunity I got. Um, and, you know, would have liked to have been managed? Yeah, of course I would have done. But I left with my head held high. We we managed to... Like, to you know, steer the ship round and, and got to the playoff final, which was at the time when I went in, looked as though it wasn't going to happen. Um, but, uh, yeah, listen, it, you know, obviously they might come in and, and did exactly what I would have done. I think we had 13 players out of contract. You know, I, I'd spoke to Dave King and the only one player that out of the 13 we would have kept was Kenny Miller, which what obviously Mark did and added to the likes of Wagon and Tavernier and people like that. And it went on to you know, to to win the league comfortably, and I, and I probably watched most most. I was working for TV at that time, watched every game, and um, yeah, it was a good time to get back back in where. Listen, let's be right, Rangers. Did you know belonged? Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So then back down south for management. The game was it back to Bradford after that? Was it Scunthorpe? Uh, no, yeah, back back to. Um, Gosh, you can ask me there. Yeah, back to Bradford. Yep. A little bit spelt gone thought back to Bradford. I've been Bradford more times than anything. But uh, yeah, and then ended up obviously going um, back to Sheffield United as assistant manager um, a couple of years ago. And again, I think we we're 16th in the league, um, struggling in the in the championship. Managed to turn it round a little bit. Got to play a final or semi final. Got beat by Forest. But the next year got promoted to the Premier League, which was you know, a real special season, uh, and obviously getting in the Premier League, it was it was a different kettle of fish, as you say, coming up against some unbelievable players, and you know, unfortunately, you know, we 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 we, we couldn't manage to stay there. But um, yeah, listen, I, I look almost, back on my career. It's like a different sport when you look at some oh. of these top level guys. It's yeah, incredible. incredible. You, you know, the players we're up against, and um, but you know, we, we it was a, a great experience, as everything is, and. You know, I've just turned 60 now, but uh, there's plenty of uh, fight in the old body still, and you know we'll see what the the future holds. Yeah. So bringing things to a close now. What's next for you, and what are you hoping for for the forthcoming season, <coughs> Rangers? Well, yeah, I, I managed to make a lot of the games last season, um, and it, it was it, listen, it was tough. It's tough as a Rangers supporter at this moment in time. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I think. And Mr. Clement, they've got the right manager, and I always say with managers, you need to give them time to bring their own players in, create their own culture at a football club. Uh, it's no good, you know, chopping and changing managers every two minutes. So, you know, hopefully um, he can get the players he wants to 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 bring in, um, aligned with the players they've got, and, and hopefully build on what was um, a, a, a tough season, but a season where. Um, you could see, you know, things beginning to progress. Um, you saw his managerial style, and and hopefully, as I said, end of the day, football's about players. You know, obviously, you need a manager to get the best out of them. But if you can get the right players that you want at your football club, and it, that don't mean to say spending millions, it's getting the right characters and personalities Definitely. at your club, um, because that's what you need in a dressing room, and especially when you're at Rangers, because, you know, as everyone says, and it's right, seconds nothing. Um, you need to win. Uh, and how you do that there's many different ways to do it but it's about winning um, and, and that's what's got to be next season and you know again it's, it's, it's going to be a massive challenge but you know hopefully the managers can bring the players in that are, are up for the challenge and again it's not always about ability it's a lot of it is about character yeah. and if you get the right characters in your dressing room you've got a hell of a chance yeah, well, I always say that Hard work beats talent, and talent doesn't work hard. Well, that's that's a saying that everyone knows, and yeah. it is. I mean, listen, the times under the gaffer at Rangers when we done the nine in a row. You know, be times you look back and think, you know, Celtic, uh, you know, we had some unbelievable players. You know, you, you, you De Canios and Van Hooydonks and, and whatever, and originally you mixed days and Collins and like that. Yeah. Um, 
but we just had this sort of desire. I think that's that's what football's about. You need obviously the best players, and we had that later on with Gascoigne and Loudrup and Alberts and people like that. But um, for me, it, 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 it's about desire, and as, and, and as your comment says, you know, hard work, um, strong mentality. As as as, you know, as long as you need to be, as much as you need to be a, a good football player naturally, you have especially at Rangers, you need to have a strong mentality. And if we get Many of them in the dressing room have got that allied with the talent. Then hopefully we can we can go far. Yeah, yeah. Leadership. I think that's. Uh, I think we spoke about that last night as well. Is it? Uh, yeah. You know, is what what we need. You know, you need to. You know, not just one person, but other players kind of leading. It's it's a dying art. Um, this leadership and, and not not just at Rangers throughout the uh, throughout the leagues, um, throughout football nowadays. You know, yeah. and it'll harp on back to my day. It was a great day and all that, and then football was better because obviously football's will change massively but the one thing that has I think gone out of the game is natural leadership and that's maybe because you know when you come into academies now things get done for you you don't have to do the, the, the jobs and the, the the stuff I used to do as a kid um, and that gives you a sort of sense of you know what it means and takes to be a professional footballer uh, but yeah listen, we, we, as, many, as many leaders in the dressing room you can get the better and obviously I think uh, Say, Mr. Clement will be be looking to add, you know, some 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 guys that have got them leadership qualities. I mean, I was fortunate to play. I, you know, normally nowadays you'd struggle to say who's the leader in the dressing rooms. I mean, you know, obviously we had the Goffrey as captain, but from the goalie right through to Coyce and Big Mark up front, we had leaders throughout. Ian Ferguson, Bomber, David Robertson, every, everyone, you know, that that was in that team were leaders and uh, and and ultimately winners. Definitely. Listen, awesome. thank you very much for your time today. I'll let you go in and get your journey down the road. <laughs> really appreciate that, Stuart. And thanks very much for last night also. We really appreciate that. Yeah, thank brilliant. You. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.